welcome back to my channel. So, first things first, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this lip color. Mm, kind of makes me look paler than I think I actually am. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, so today I'm going to give you guys eight ways to save money or how eight reasons that you can afford to be a stay-at-home mom. I know that a lot of people, um, a lot of people want to be stay-at-home parents. So whether you're a mom or dad, um, it's not unobtainable. A lot of people have asked me how we afford to, for me to be a stay-at-home mom um, when we have a one-income home. One income. I say in quotations because we'll get to that. But we have a one-income home. It. The first things first, you have to vocalize your wants to your partner, whether it be a spouse or um, a fiance or something like that. You need to vocalize the fact that you have a desire to be a stay-at-home parent first and foremost. You need to talk to your partner and see if it is something that you guys can do um, financially right away. So it's something that you guys need to figure out if you can do it. And I will give you guys eight tips on how to budget and how being a stay-at-home parent is probably more attainable and affordable than you think it is. Um, but I don't want this in any way to make working parents feel like they are less than. If you want to work, do it. Like, don't let this say, well, don't let me say, Oh, you should be a stay-at-home parent if you can. No, there is lots of parents out there who can afford to stay home, but they don't. Staying at home is hard and is sometimes lonely. It's frustrating. It's long days, um, and it's not for everybody. Just like working as a parent isn't for everybody. Uh, if your kids are happy, healthy, and taken care of, and you are doing the best that you know how to do, then that is the best that you know how to do, and that is perfectly fine. Parenting is difficult enough without people judging at people all the time. So don't let me make you feel like you're less than because you don't stay at home, or that you're less than because you do stay at home. Because <clears throat> there's two ends of the spectrum. Um, my mom worked most of my child like younger years and then when my brother was born she stayed at home with us for, mo for most of my high school career so I've seen both ends and I'm perfectly fine my mom worked and didn't work and I was I feel like I've grown up like a decent human being so for those of the, you that do not know I am a stay-at-home mom of three I have a nine eight and my son will be four tomorrow, so today um, is actually March 2nd, and he was born on March 3rd, so I have a four-year-old tomorrow. So we'll start starting preschool and stuff like that, so be ready for some breakdowns in the near future. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've been a stay-at-home mom for four and a half years. I became a stay-at-home mom when I was pregnant with Jensen, my youngest, and it has been the best and the most stressful four and a half years of my life, but I would not trade them for the world. So, longest intro ever. Let's get right into the video and the eight budget tips that you can um, afford to be a stuff mom without further ado. So, my tip I don't know how to call these, I don't know whether I call these tips or budget cuts because. These aren't really tips. This is just showing you how much an average parent would spend um, if they were working. And then this is like equal of what you would spend as a working parent. And then you decide if you can afford that or not. So number one expense is daycare. You obviously need your children to go somewhere when you're at work. Um, if they're not of school age and if they are of school age, most likely you don't have a job where you drop them off to school, go to work, and then you're off by the time they get picked up because that's just not, this is not plausible. Like, it's possible, I'm sure, but it's not realistic for a lot of the country. So, um, I looked up 
the average cost of daycare um, in America. So I didn't do in my area because I live in a royal, royal, I cannot say that word, uh, country area. So my prices are not going to be the same as other people's. Um, we do not have a lot of low income families here, so there's not a low, lot of low income options where I am. But we also don't have a lot of wealthy families here, so there's not a lot of like crazy private wealthy. We do have a private school in our community, um, but I did not look up those prices because I didn't even want to think about it. <laughs> um, so I just looked up the national average. So it's for a daycare center, so like you take your kid to an actual daycare center, it is about $733 a month for a child that's two and over. I did children that are two and over because babies are just substantially more expensive. Um, I think it was like almost $1,100 for a baby in diapers. So keep that in mind as well. But so we just said $733 is the average amount that somebody would spend on a child two and above for a full-time daycare center, um, 40 hours a week at the daycare center. And then $270 a month if you would take him to an in-home babysitter, um, such as like somebody who just kind of watches kids. And I, there's different opinions on those. Um, there's benefits to a daycare center because usually they tailor to their learning activities and they have like a scheduled um, curriculum and they do field trips and stuff like that and usually when you take them to an in-home daycare it's just they kind of sit there and watch your kids they really don't interact with them a whole bunch so you spend about $270 a month if you're taking them to somebody in-home and $733 a month if you're saving taking them to a daycare facility if you become a stay-at-home parent you're spending zero because you are the one that is watching your children all the time so um, number two diapers so you don't really think like oh well my kids gonna need diapers regardless of whether I'm stay home or not but you will so the average person changes their baby's diaper four times a day which I was trying to think back to four years ago when Jensen was still in diapers and that seems a little low I feel like I changed his diaper a lot more I don't know if I was like neurotic about it but when he got older I would say I changed it a lot less like two like one and two years old and he was crawling it was a lot less but when he was a newborn and stuff I feel like I changed it a lot so you change your baby's diaper four times a day so the and daycares usually check every two hours so it can be even more than four times a day it could be up to ten times a day but I'm just gonna say you change your baby's diaper four times a day so you use four disposable diapers a day. A pack of diapers um, is, is like what? Oh my God, how long is this I bought diaper? Like $20 for a pack of diapers? $5, I don't know, okay. So you're just gonna spend about 50 to $80 a month on disposable diapers. If you stay home all the time, you have the option of using cloth diapers, which is gonna cost you initially like $10 for like seven diapers and you can wash them, so $10. That's all. So you'll save 50 to $80 a month just by you staying home and using cloth diapers. Most daycare centers will not let you use cloth diapers and most in-home babysitters don't want to use cloth diapers because it's they require to wash them right away. So there's like, there's been a lot of controversy around this subject of breastfeeding um, while at work. In my state of Ohio, your work is required to allow you um, for the first year after coming back from your postpartum is required to allow you um, pumping time. But it could get, I could, under, I could see where it could get really awkward and kind of nuisancey, I guess, to pump while at work. So you're going to be more likely to switch over to formula. And if you were at home all the time, you would you could exclusively breastfeed. So there is cases where you can't exclusively breastfeed. I fed, breastfed Jensen um, for three months, and then I dried up. I had some like thyroid issues, and I just wasn't producing enough milk, and I was having to supplement with formula anyway. So we did end up having to go formula full time. But if you can breastfeed full time, and then it's because you are working that you don't you could eliminate the cost of formula completely by breastfeeding and stay home with your kid. 
which is, I saw the national average, you go through about 10 cans of formula a month for a baby, which I feel like is about right. Um, it could fluctuate. You could go through less or more depending on gross works and stuff like that. And the average can costs about $17. So you're spending about $170 a month in formula. And if you stayed home and breastfed exclusively, you would save that $170 a month. So that's the second reason why you could afford to stay home. Third reason, groceries. So if you are new here, I do grocery hauls once a month and I spend $350 a month for my family of five. That's exclusive. That's all we eat. That's all we eat and all we drink all month long. I budget everything and that's all we spend. Um, so the national average for a fam an average family, which an average family was um, two adults and two to three children. And if your children are young, the national average is $622. And if you have older children, it was $821. Now, I have younger kids, so we do spend $350. When they get into the teenage years, I'll probably just add $50 to that budget because I'll buy more meat and um, have our food with us stretch a little bit farther. So I'll probably do a $400 budget at that point. But if you follow my budget and have young kids and you are spending $620 a month on, on groceries and follow the budget to $350, you could save $272, which is a lot of money. And if you have older kids and follow the budget to $400, you could save $421 because the average older, average older children family spends $821 a month on groceries. I can see why this happens a lot with working parents. Because you don't have the time to meal plan like I do. You don't have the time to sit down and cook all the time. You don't have the time or the convenience of being home to be able to cook breakfast, cook a snack, cook lunch, cook another snack, cook dinner, um, prepare lunches for school, prepare lunches for work, and stuff like that. I can understand the convenience of going through a fast food restaurant. I can understand the convenience of getting pre-portioned food or pre-made food from the store. So I understand where this number, these numbers are coming from. I'm just saying that if you decided to stay home, you could substantially cut your grocery bill almost in half, if not more than half, because of planning and having the time to make things from scratch, having the time to um, prepare for the month, having the time to actually be able to make fresh meals for all your meals of the day, stuff like that. So keep that in mind as well. So number four kind of goes in with number three, but it's... And to my opinion, with how much it can be saved, it needed a, its own separate category. So number four is eating out. The average person eats out five times a day. So I say the average family probably eats out, or five, yeah, five times a day. So if you're spending, if you go out to eat about five times a day, or so when I was looking up national, five times a day is a lot. That's more than your meals, right? Well, they count the coffee at Starbucks. That's going to cost you four dollars. They count the um, uh, donuts or the snacks or breakfast, lunch. So the average person eats out about five times a day. And if you are a family of five like us, we probably we would spend anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars going out to eat. So I said twenty on the low side. So twenty dollars five times a day is a hundred dollars a day. Or yeah, sorry, five times a week, not a day. Woo! Five times a week. <laughs> I thought that sounded like a lot. So the average person spends or goes out to eat five times a week. And let's say they they spend $20 a day or a, every time they go out to eat. So they're spending $100 a week, so $400 a month. So you can save $400 a month just by not eating out. And again, I understand the convenience of eating out. I understand that it's um, easier for people who don't stay at home all the time to eat out, you're tired, you've worked a long day, you don't have the energy or the mentality to actually prepare, you just don't want to do it. I get it. It was me when I was working, I would swing through a drive through and grab something for dinner instead of going home and having to stand on my feet for any longer. I get it. So you can save $400 a month if you stop going out to eat by staying home as a parent. Number five. This one sounds kind of like, well, duh. But your transportation, you're going to save a lot of money in transportation because you don't need the gas now to get back and forth to work. You don't need such high maintenance on your car because you're not driving it as often. Um, if you're going to stay, be a stay-at-home parent, be a stay-at-home parent. 
I see a lot of people who are like, well, but I can't afford it. I'm like struggling. But you're going out to brunches and you're going out to get coffee and you're going this because you're bored at home. If you're going to be a stay-at-home parent, stay at home. I'm not saying stay at home 24-7 for the rest of your life. I'm just saying think about things. When you go to town because you need this, think about a list of things that you need from town and do it all in one day instead of going to town every day that week. You're going to save a lot of gas. So let's say you spend $400 in gas and parking and um, maintenance on your car and stuff like that. We'll cut that in half. We'll say you're going to spend about $200 because you're still going to take your kids to school if you have school. You're going to still take them to activities if you have activities or run errands and stuff like that. So I'm not going to say you're going to completely cut out your car because I would never tell you to do that. But I'm saying you can cut it in half. You can do about $200 a month and instead of about $400 a month on gas and car maintenance. Number six is recreational fun. So the average family spends about $150 a month on recreational fun. So that's like going to Chuck E. Cheese or taking them to the zoo or the music park and stuff like that. And we do that. I'm not saying we don't. But we don't do $150 a month. And I think the big reasons for that is because parents who actually work a 40-hour week and don't spend a lot of time with their kids are feeling guilty for not spending time with their children. So they're taking them out on these big extravagant trips or taking them on these like large extravagant things and overcompensating with their wallet because of the lack of time they're spending with their children. And I understand. I probably would be the same way. So with you being a stay-at-home parent, you're not going to feel as guilty and you'll probably get more creative. You'll go to the park, uh, which is free, instead of going to a water park, which costs you money. You'll think you'll find you will have those open hours when they have like dollar swim days. You can take them on the dollar swim day because you don't have anything planned for the week. You can do that now. You can spend quality time with your children by having a movie night at home. Like, there's so many things. But I'm not saying completely cut that out. So I would say spend $25 a month instead of $150 a month. And if you want to go to like a big extravagant thing like the zoo or Chuck E. Cheese, just don't do anything the month before. And then you have $50 to spend at Chuck E. Cheese or the zoo instead of the $25 a month. Just think about things like that. Like budget accordingly and think about the things that you do to overcompensate for the fact that you work all the time that you're feeling guilty because if you are wanting to be a stay-at-home parent it's probably because you're feeling a little guilty for not spending time with your kids number seven is clothing and work social uh, social activities so think about um how much money you spend and getting new work supplies getting new work shoes whether it be steel toe boots or high heels or something like that. Think about what you spend if you have an office job. How much you spend on new um, business attire because you have to look presentable all the time. Think about how much you spend on drinks after work. Or if you have a meeting and you have to buy lunch for yourself. Think about those things. You don't have to do it anymore. I'm not saying that you have to wake up and look like a slob. I'm just saying a messy bun and some lipsticks will get you a lot farther as a stay-at-home mom than a messy bun, lipsticks, and sweatpants will get you at your office job. So you'll spend, you'll probably spend like $100 a month in um, new clothing, work supplies, or um, work social activities. So cut that down to 50 So instead of getting cocktails with co-workers that you used to do, pick once a month and go get cocktails with some girlfriends, other stay-at-home moms. Pick, take 50, the $50 recreational that you have now. Uh, I mean, clothing and stuff like that you have now, and add it to your recreation. Now you have $75 a month to go to something with your kids. Just cut it in half. Don't buy the, instead of buying like that $30 business suit that you had your eye on on the clearance rack, you can take that and buy Easter. So think about things like that. And then eighth. Number eight is my last tip, and it's not really like a cutting budget tip or what you do or whatever, but if all this is all added up and you still can't seem to afford not having a second income, work from home. I will do a separate video on things that you can do um, to make money at home because there's so many things and I've done a lot of them, I swear. <laughs> I've been a stay-at-home mom for four and a half years and I have gone through them and I will tell you everything there is and some things are not for everybody. Some things I tried and I was like, this is not for me, but it might be for you, so I'll let you know anyways. But I will do a completely different video of that. And you can make upwards to 
a thousand dollars a month or you can make fifty dollars a month it's just all about your all about you all about well how much time you put into things and stuff like that but that's eight so if you can't afford even after making all these budget cuts and after crunching some numbers and looking at your lifestyle and learning to live without then maybe a work from home situation is a thing for you and you could hustle at home and be your own boss and make the dough that you need to be a stay-at-home parent so I went through and I added all the highest savings that you can make that you can save with cutting out childcare, grocery budgeting, stop eating out so much, cutting your recreational, um, cutting your clothing in half, cutting your gas in half, stuff like that. So with all that, you're saving an average of $2,170 a month. So if you make more than $2,170 a month and you want to be a stay-at-home mom and you know that you cannot do that, then I'm so sorry. And I'm, that's all I got for you. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, I think everybody can be a stay-at-home parent that wants to be a stay-at-home parent if you have a wonderful partner. Now, I know that I would not in a million years be able to be a stay-at-home parent if it wasn't for my wonderful, wonderful life partner. So, the person that you choose in life to raise your kids with and to run your household with has to be on the same page of what kind of lifestyle you want to live. So we knew that, we both knew that I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And he knew that he wanted a stay-at-home wife and a stay-at-home mother to his children because he wanted there, somebody there 24-7 all the time um, to be there for his kids. He wanted to come home to a clean house. He wanted to home cooked meals all the time. And... I knew that I needed somebody to provide for us. And so when we first got together, we talked about that. Um, we knew that we were all the, both on the same page about when we started having children. And so when that happened, I became a stay-at-home parent. And like I said, it all starts with communication with your partner. And it might not be obtainable now, but it might be obtainable in a year. Your partner might get a promotion and you can stay at home or might switch jobs and you can stay at home. It's all up to you. Nothing is unattainable. If it's really something that you want, you can work hard at it and you can get it done. And if you are a single parent and you want to stay home, I'm 100% sure it's obtainable because I know parents who are single parents and they stay at home. And no, they're not living off the government. It's just hard work. They hustle. They work their butts off at home. So you can do it, I promise. Um, if anybody has any questions or want me to crunch some numbers for you guys, I will certainly do that. Like I said, look out for the next video of, um, I think I have 10 ways to make money from home, which there's so many more, but I've just tried 10. So if you like more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, and I hope to see you guys back on the next one. Bye.